IR spectroscopy is an important analytical tool. It finds application in both quantitative and qualitative analysis. In the organic chemistry lab, it's especially useful in elucidating the structure of an unknown compound. Uh, the process in determining the structure of a compound is to obtain an IR spectrum of that compound. Now the IR spectrum consists of a set of signals called peaks or bands. The observed frequency of, of a given peak identifies the bond or set of bonds in the molecule that creates the peak. The IR spectrum alone will generally not tell you the complete structure of a compound, but it will identify what functional groups are present. Tips in IR spectral interpretation. We've already discussed um, that you should look just at the peaks on the left, the stretching bands, and ignore, at least initially, the, the peaks on the right. Those are the bending bands. The observed individual bending frequencies only occasionally provide structural information. It generally works like this. We, by examining the streaks, the peaks in the stretching region, we can conclude what functional groups are present. In certain cases, we can get more detailed information about the functional groups by then going to the right side of the spectrum and making interpretations of the bending peaks. We'll see an example of that later on. But the idea is, find out what the functional groups are, you let the stretching bands tell you that, and then to get more detailed information about certain functional groups, you then can consult the peaks on the right side, the bending peaks. Third, the width and height of peaks can sometimes provide information about molecular structure. We've already mentioned that the OH and NH peak um, tend to be broader peaks. The OH is generally broader than the NH, so they both, both occur about the same place in the spectrum, around 3,500 wave numbers. So if you see a peak at 3,500, the question is, is it an OH or NH? And you can often tell by the broadness of the peak. If it's a very broad peak, uh, it, that tends to indicate an OH. Uh, only modestly broad uh, peak would indicate an NH uh, group. Now here's a suggestion with regard to interpreting an IR spectrum. Basically you want to start from the left end, work your way towards the right. As we proceed from left to right, the first peaks we encounter are peaks for the OH and the NH group. So it makes sense to look for those first. Do you have an alcohol? Do you have a phenol? Do you have possibly an amine? If you do, you'll see peaks uh, in the region indicated here. On average, about 3,500. Those uh, are associated with the stretching motions of OH and NH. Now, next thing to look for is the hydroxyl group of a carboxylic acid. That particular peak is extremely broad. We've mentioned this before. Um, I refer to it as the camel's hump in a spectrum. The peak is so broad, it generally stretches from around 3,300 all the way down to 2,500. Now, th that can vary a little bit, but it's it's extremely uh, broad peak. Sometimes shallow, but still very broad. If you see a very broad peak, that is a strong indication that you have a, a carboxylic acid group, a carboxyl group. All right, as we proceed more towards the right uh, end of the spectrum, next we want to look for 
the possible presence of a C.C. Dolban and an alkene or a ma an aromatic ring. So the place you want to look for is between 3,000 and 3,100 wave numbers. If you have an alkene with an alkenal hydrogen or an aromatic ring with uh, hydrogens bonded to the ring, and that's almost always the case for an aromatic compound, you should see a peak between 3,000 and 3,100. Remember that 3,000 is a dividing line. Um, alkane or alkyl CHs will have frequencies below 3,000. Um, CHs of alkene, alkyne, and aromatic will be above 3,000. So anyway, as we're um, surveying our spectrum, we want to look for alkene or aromatic next checking to see if we have any alkene or aromatic CHs. Is there a peak between 3,000 and 3,100? Now, staying with that, there's an additional functional group for both aromatic and alkene that we can check, namely a CC a double bond for alkene or a CC bond for aromatic. For a CC double bond, we'll see a peak between 1,600 and 1,680. Those peaks uh, um, they tend to be narrow and of variable height. Now the aromatic CC bond uh, is uh, close to this, but look for this. There's generally two characteristic peaks, one around 1,500 and the other 1,600. And there's often, not always, a third peak at 1,450. So if you see a peak between 3,000 and 3,100, you may have either an alkene or an aromatic to tell whether it's an alkene or aromatic, uh, look at the 1600-1500 uh, region. If you see a peak between two peaks, one of 15 and 16, that's a, that's a good indication you have an aromatic compound. If you don't see that, but instead have a peak somewhere between 1600 and 1680, that's suggestive that you have an alkene. All right, uh, the next thing that, uh, to, to look for is uh, an alkyne. Now, the alkyne is a triple bond, and there's two possible locations. Uh, the triple bond could be at the end of the chain or in the middle. If it's at the end of the chain, you'll see an alkynal CH. And that produces a characteristic band about 3,300. It's a narrow band, but often small. The next thing with respect to an alkyne is to look for a band uh, associated with a CC triple bond. That band you'll find between 2,100 and 2,170. It's a stretching kind of motion. It's narrower, uh, it's narrow and generally a variable height. Next we come to the carbonyl group. We mentioned that this particular functional group, you see it in aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, esters, and other functional groups. It's generally a, a large prominent peak in the spectrum. And it generally falls in the range 1680 to 1740, although for different functional groups, you, you can have values above 1740 and, and even occasionally below 1680. So one has to be careful here. But other than that, there's not a lot of other functional groups producing peaks in this range. So if you see something in that range, 1680, 1740, pretty good bet you've got a carbonyl group. So it's a, it's a, it is a group that's very um, seeable that functional group is one functional group. The functional group carbonyl group is one that's generally readily ad, ad, ad identified because of that characteristic uh, position in the IR spectrum. Next, look for an aldehyde. I think we've also mentioned that when you look to the other chart, an aldehyde CH stretch produces two peaks: 2720, 2820. Next, we look for a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. Uh, triple bond, the C triple bond N, is a, uh, produces a peak that's very close, actually, to a CC triple bond. You can see how close the values are here and here. Um, but uh, um, that if you have a peak between in, in that region, um, well, for 2200, 2600, that's indicative of a CN triple bond that's called a nitrile group.
Now, we mentioned that the bending bands can provide additional information. A bit later, we'll look at an example of that.